Good morning, this is Andrew Chernetsky, and today I'm going to show you how to export a basic scene, such as our Cornell box here, into Peerlight. So starting with this scene, I have it all broken down into discrete objects, such as in this case the walls, these boxes, the floor. Uh, breaking it down like this is important because I can control the light map resolution independently on each piece. This allows me to get the best resolution and best performance mix. Uh, actually works quite well. So in order to get this scene into Peerlight, I'm going to have to export it out of 3D Max. Right now I'm using 3D Max, could be uh, any uh, standard 3D application. Uh, right now I'm going to be exporting it as ASC files, but we also support Collada. So I'm going to take each piece, such as the walls here, and I'm going to export using Export Selected. I have that bound to a hotkey. I'm going to uh, find my project directory here. Uh, there we go. And in that I'm going to export it to a folder I've made here called Module Common. We'll explain modules more in the uh, later tutorials. For now let's just assume all the meshes go into Module Common. So I'm going to select in this case ASC files and I'm going to export uh, the file with the prefix LMA. That's the standard uh, light mapping prefix. We'll get into the different prefixes and lighting options later but for now let's just assume everything's LMA. So in this case LMA walls, basic settings, I'm just going to hide it so I've seen what I've uh, already exported here. I'll make boxes. I'll make floor. And LMA ceiling. I'm also going to have to export our light source here. Now we support lights as either point lights, directional lights, or object lights. Because this piece is geometry, it's an object light, so I'm going to export it just the same as the previous meshes, but I need to put it in the lights common folder, and the prefix for an object light is OL, so just OL lamp. So now that I have all the geometry in the scene exported into discrete files, I need to digest those files into Pure Light's internal file format. To do that, I'm going to use our application called Prelight. So the first thing I need to do with Prelight for a new scene is I have to create a scene file. So I'm going to go File, Create Scene File select my project folder. So here are the basic settings. Right now I'm using uh, one unit is one inch, so I'm going to make sure my scene's set to inches. Otherwise I'm going to leave the defaults intact. Uh, we'll talk more about what those properties mean on later tutorials. So the most important setting in Prelight is the texel size. You can think of each texel of light, or on the light map represents uh, one pixel if you're looking at the light map as a 2D image. The, more, uh, texel, or the smaller your texel size, the more pixels you have on your image, the better your resolution, but the more that's going to cost in video memory. So really the texel size is going to be your balance on controlling light map resolution, quality, performance, etc. So to start, I'm going to just set a texel size of 1 for the small scene, so that's one texel is 1 inch, and then I'm going to click Convert and Optimize. So you can see in the log here, it's taking each file, digesting the triangles, and generating our light map. No errors. And we can take a look at these are the files that have been uh, digested into Peer Light. You can see this is the uh, potential light map resolution on the side. Now these numbers are very small. You can see it's taking 0.1 uh, megabytes. This is ideal for just a quick testing to see if my lights are in the right range, etc. So I'm not going to worry about these for now. I'm just going to go File, Load Scene into Peer Light. So welcome to, uh, to Peer Light here. You can see it's this nice big 3D viewport. Everything's showing up red because there's no lighting information on it. So in order to generate some lighting information here, I'm going to start baking. So I'm going to go lighting, start bake, and I'm going to start baking at one sample per pass. So if you think about this, each text is going to get one sample into the world. It'll finish the whole scene very quickly, but it'll still be very noisy. Perfect for previewing. So start bake, one sample per pass. You can see because it's such a small scene, we're whipping through these passes very quick. And already this is too bright. So not bad, but I'm going to stop this double click on our object light which brings up its properties and I'm going to drop its power. So let's try something around 0.5 for example. So I've made that change. Now in order to see that change in the lighting I'm going to have to rebake. Now if this were a larger scene perhaps I need to only rebake one area but for a scene like this I'm just going to start baking everything. So lighting, start bake, one sample. This lighting, this is perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So well, this looks really good, you get some nice and direct, and I could certainly bake it in and be a little bit less noisy over here in the corners. Really, for this tech demo, I want to have it uh, higher resolution. So I'm going to go back to pre-light here, take a look at our objects. So this is a 64-64 light map, Texas size 1.4. Let's, let's bump the uh, light map resolution. 
So let's try 0.25, change texel size. You can see this is gonna be a lot more uh, refined. I'm gonna press find optimal. Well, it can't automatically find anything better. Maybe adjust it a little bit more. So this is pretty good. Now, wasted space on the light map is wasted memory, but it's a bounce. This little bit on a 256 light map is really not that much. LMA ceiling. Same idea, so I'm just gonna manipulate it to get it as best as possible. Again, how far you push is really dependent on your scene and how nitpicky you wanna be. LMA floor. So because this is the same size square, this other one here is 3.25. 0.25 is pretty good. And then, so 128 light map, 128, 256, and then our walls. The walls get some pretty interesting lighting, so let's actually bump that to uh, 0.25, see what it gives us. Uh, that's not good, 0.2. 175. So the smaller the light map uh, texel size, the larger high, or higher res the light map will be. So let's try 0.6. There you go. So this should be nice and efficient. Now the one thing though, looking at this, the ceiling's not going to get any interesting shadows. So we can actually probably bump that up slightly. So we'll actually go for that 64 light map instead of the uh, 128. So now that I'm fairly happy with this and we can go back and forth and test as much as we want. So we've now bumped it to just under two megs of light map resolution and let's go into pure light, file reload geometry. So that's going to bring in all the new or added changes. And now let's start bake. You can see it's taking a little longer to finish each pass, but far higher resolution. You can see we'll get some great area shadows here based on that uh, area light. So it's estimating a pass is going to take 15 seconds. You can see this is actually really high resolution for the walls. In fact, I almost want to say the walls are probably too high res. Because while we get some interesting shadows down here, you can think by the time this resolves, you're not going to see anything. Ceiling though, you can see because the ceiling's a lower res light map, you can see the size of these dots are bigger. Ceiling's probably pretty good for what we want. Floor two, floor looks really nice. We're gonna get some great definition. The box is great definition. We're gonna bump up the, uh, the walls. So we're just gonna select the walls, copy, paste that into the search field here. So it selects our walls. And uh, let's maybe bump that up to 0.4, something around here. 0.35, yeah, that should be just fine. File, reload geometry, lighting, and I'm going to go continue bake. So that's only gonna be working on the walls. It's gonna leave everything else because that hasn't changed. You can see, you know what, that resolution, we're going to get some great shadows still, but I think it'll be a little bit more reasonable. You can see the nice indirect uh, bouncing off the walls here. You know what, I think I'm pretty happy with this lighting. So instead of baking it at one sample per pass, which is really for previewing, I'm going to stop and then go lighting, continue bake at 16 samples per pass. So this is going to take a lot longer to finish one pass, you can see here. But uh, each time it completes a section, we're going to see a much bigger shift. It's also more efficient if you're going to be rendering this over a longer period of time. As you can see right now it's working on the floor, finish the floors, and this just got a whole lot smoother. Uh, lighting being finished in pure light is a bit of an abstract term because pure light is more than happy to continue baking as long as you give it CPU power. Uh, Really though, it's an aesthetic judgment. So for this scene right here, we're mostly done. I'd probably even say, you know what, we can uh, turn off the ceiling because the ceiling's about as good as it's gonna get and then just continue baking on the rest. Typically I'd say a scene here with no textures is probably finished somewhere around four to eight samples or four to eight passes at 16 samples per pass. Really, it's an aesthetic judgment. Small objects tend to finish really quick. If it's a scene with just a very simple light, such as the sunlight, it should uh, resolve really quick compared to uh, our object light here. If you have textures with a heavy texture on it, you might not see that noise at all. So it really depends on a number of factors. Long story short though, you let it continue baking and you stop it when, uh, when you're ready. So right now we're at five samples at 16 and uh, I really don't think we're gonna get much smoother than this. There's a hint of variance if you look really close, but I think we're, uh, we're about as good as it's gonna get. So I'm just gonna let it finish this pass. I'm gonna stop. I'm going to enable this object here. And we now have finished lighting. So the last thing I need to do before I import this into the gaming engine of my choice is just go lighting, save all modules, saves those to TGA files, 
and we are done. Thank you and I hope you found this tutorial uh, quite useful.